Hello and welcome, this is Eagle Eye 621 and what you see behind me is some shaky sand kelp. Now, kelp is one of those super crops that has a lot of different uses. You can smelt it to get XP. In its smelted form, it is food as well as fuel as well as a building block. You can compost it for bone meal and you can use the kelp itself to help generate source water. There are just a lot of things you can do, including trade to get emeralds for it. So I'm going to give you some numbers, but before I do that, let me do the proper YouTube thing and ask you all to subscribe. Less than 10% of you are actually subscribers and it does help out a lot. Just hit that button. It's totally free. Now let me give you some numbers, but before I give you the numbers, just do be warned that we are working in one of the snapshots. There are no guarantees this will make it into the final release. We even heard some terrible rumors that they're about to patch the normal zero tick, and if they do that, the shaky sand may also be a casualty of that. But if you're playing in the snapshots, you can at least get a little bit of use out of it. As for those numbers, each smelted kelp is 0.1 XP, and that's per smelt. The kelp blocks themselves can burn 20 items, and as they're stackable at 64 per stack, that is 1,280 smelts per stack. In terms of comparison, while lava can do 100, it's not stackable. The only thing that beats this for compactness are the coal blocks. In terms of trading them, you can trade them with an expert butcher. The default is 10 kelp blocks for one emerald, but you can get that all the way down to one block per emerald. And while it is food, it's rated on the low side, but it is rather easy to get in decent quantities and you can eat it faster than the other foods. It's not the bottom ranked food in terms of what the wiki has to say. It starts with supernatural, then goes to good, normal, low, and poor. This would be a low food, but you can make it in some pretty mass quantities with that. In terms of the composter, you have a 30% chance for one layer, which translates to 21.33 kelp or dried kelp on average to get one bone meal. You can also compost the kelp blocks, but it's not worth it in terms of your production. Now, in terms of this farm's output, I'm going to give you the per slice numbers, that is each individual kelp plant, because you can build this as big as you want. Each plant will produce about 2,768 per hour. I'm just going to round that down to 2,750 to make it a little bit easier, and because there is some variance, you would need 3.82 smokers, which are twice as effective as the regular furnaces, which would generate, in terms of your XP, 275 per hour, which comes out to 6,600 per day. That's enough to get you from 0 to 30 4.7 times, or from 27 to 30 over 21 times. You only need a third of your composter's power, again this is per slice, and that will give you 118 bone meal per hour, which comes out to 44.26 stacks per day. Now if you're also going to use this to fuel itself, let's just cut that by 50%, and that will come out to 59 per hour, or a little over 22 stacks per day, again that is per slice. And for your emerald trade, each slice of this will get you 30.55 emeralds per hour, or 733.3 per day. And if you get it down to the best trade that you can, that would be the one block per emerald. This farm will get you, per slice, 7,333 emeralds per day. So let me show you how to make this and the materials that you will need as well. And you can see that we are in the current snapshot. Now because this farm is very modular, we broke this down into a couple of different systems. 
These are the materials that you'll need for the clock and for the harvesting timings. And then these are the per slice materials. That is, you will need these materials each. So double this for two slices, triple this for three slices, and then you'll need some blocks for the water stream. Let me add some additional just generic blocks in here because you will need them for the outside and some water containment. And then over here we have everything you'll need for three slices worth of the farm. And I just used two water buckets for some infinite water. And let's grab a copy of these and go find a nice place to build them. Let's give ourselves some room all the way over here. And let's get these materials into the inventory. And it's plenty far away. Start by going up a couple of blocks just to make sure we have enough space to drop down. And we're going to put a sticky piston with our slime block and our redstone block right here to be able to turn this farm on. And grab the lever to activate it. Now we want this to extend such that it will hit some redstone dust. And we can also build this out just a little bit to give us some correct orientations. And speaking of the orientation, it's very important the direction you build this, which I will show you in one second, because the zero tick pistons are very finicky. They don't work in one orientation. So we're going to put our sticky piston in line with this. And then we're going to put one observer like that. And then one observer like this. So when it extends, it forms a nice observer clock. And we're going to put a no block there. And this button is just to make sure it doesn't make any noise. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. But that noise can get annoying. And then we're going to want to take an observer signal from both of those. Let's turn this off to stop the flashing. Now we're going to make three slices. So I'm going to come out three under here as well as three under here. And then we're going to use these powered rails. You can use redstone, but the redstone is much more laggy. So I would advise against it. We're going to point our observers right into those powered rails and directly on top of those we're going to want to have our pistons facing towards the center like this and then also on this side as well so that we have our dueling pistons set up properly now we also need to get our zero tick block pushers ready so we want to come one back from each side like this and these do have to be sticky pistons they will not work if they are regular pistons and speaking of the orientation you will notice that I am looking east you can see that right here and west these block pushers must be pushing either east west if you put them north south they won't do anything your farm won't work because you won't be able to push these blocks into place. And the blocks that we're going to have are, of course, our sand that we'll put on one side and also dirt that we'll just have as our placeholder in the middle like this. And then to bring it back down here, you want to go five out from the center block on both sides. So this is the first one two, three, four, five, and then one out and one up just like this. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side as well. This is the first one. So two, three, four, five, turn that corner and then go up one. Now we want to get our repeaters here and our torches here. We're going to put a torch like that and point the observer at it. And then we're going to drag our redstone all the way around like this and put a repeater here. Make sure this is on two ticks. And then put a redstone torch like that and also point an observer at it. 
we want to come back around in here and add two of these so that we can put another repeater here. We're going to put this one on four ticks and then one more piece of redstone dust. Now we're going to take the signal from this and because we're doing three slices, we are going to come three out and we're just going to put some redstone dust on these. You don't need to use rails because these are not going to activate that frequently. It's only each time you turn on and off the machine. Let's come around on this side as well. And again, that same three. And then the same dust, just like that. We're going to be pointing our observers onto them as well. And again, we're doing that on both sides. And then we're going to need to have the, we're going to put a temporary block right here so that we can grab our trap doors. And the trap doors go directly above, excuse me, one more, directly above the observers. And then here as well. Let's make sure we go out both this time so that we can put our trapdoors directly above those observers. We're going to point another set of observers directly into those trapdoors. Again, we're going to do that on both sides. And then we're going to need a sticky piston directly underneath this. So we're going to put one block here so that we can get our sticky pistons in. So you can see how this looks from the side. It's an air gap right here. You can break that. And we're going to do the same thing. So let's put our temporary block right there so that we can get our sticky pistons just like that. And again, you can see it looks the same. Now, in order to make this work, we're going to need to have offsetting blocks. So on the side that has the sand, you want to put your solid blocks directly on top of the sticky pistons. And for the side that has an air gap right here, so you can see we have sand, dirt, and then an air gap. You want to maintain that air gap on this side so your blocks go one in the air. So air gap and air gap and no air gap, no air gap. And that way the zero tick block pushers will all work properly. So now you can see the way everything's set up. And if we turn this lever on, you'll see these blocks get pushed into place. And the sand is shaking. You'll see that these blocks now got sucked in the ground and these ones got left in the air. So again, we have this air gap and this air gap and then solid to solid. And now the reason that this repeater is here on four ticks is because we want to make sure that the sand gets pushed over before these pistons stop moving. So you'll see as we do that, the pistons will continue to move for a little bit after that sand gets pushed. And you can see that one more time. If you don't have that, then on occasion, the sand will break when you turn this off and you obviously don't want that. Now, in terms of our harvesting system, we know that the kelp is going to be planted right here. So let's get some glass and this can be any full solid block that you want or any full block that is. And then you're going to want to harvest directly above that. And for this one, I'm just going to use redstone dust, but I will link to a, a little bit more lag friendly, although it's not blinking all that much. So it's not really that big of a deal. And we're going to put redstone dust on top. And then we're going to want an observer to be powering into that redstone dust. And in terms of how we get the power up here, we're going to make a staircase. You don't want to use the trick where you use the slime blocks of the redstone block on top or the timing will be wrong and your rates will be much lower. You want to do it like this. So let's temporarily remove those bits of redstone to be able to make a ladder to climb. And we're going to need some half slabs. 
and we're going to want six of those like this so top half slabs it's one two three four five and six all top half slabs and we can remove this and we can make sure you add that redstone back and then we can make this ladder going up to get ready for our harvesting system and for that we're going to want to have our redstone block over here so that we can have our sticky piston just like this we can add another little bit of redstone to make sure that gets extended and we know that we're going to want to push a block up to here so we need to have an observer that's looking directly up at this block and then an observer looking at that other observer so again that's one space away from this sticky piston and then we can put that back and we're going to want to come around so that we have five blocks in total like this we're going to want to have our repeater like that we're going to skip one this one that the observer is facing into has to be redstone dust and then we're going to get some more redstone dust over here and over here and we're going to get three more like this and this middle one we want to be on two ticks so it is six ticks in total this one right here is on two and the rest are on one so now what's going to happen is when we turn this machine on when the sand gets pushed over this redstone ladder will also push this block right here and the observer will detect it and you'll start your harvesting clock like this and each time that goes you're trying to harvest your kelp if it's managed to grow in time it's not as precise as a certain number of ticks it's a chance so this is the clock you want to use a seven tick clock was close but this six tick clock I found to be the best and then when you turn this whole thing off the block is retracted and that breaks the redstone circuit right here so this whole thing turns off very nicely now we need to get some of these blocks to box everything in like this and you want to go one above this line right here because the kelp can get a little bit messy you also want to do the same thing on this side like this and again go one above this block right here now obviously if you're doing more slices you would continue those slices and then fill this in afterwards and you don't have to go all that high for the entire way but you do want to make sure that you don't end up with any kelp stuck on here and then you can continue this out like so and you're going to want to come in here with your buckets and let's actually get our water streams ready first so this whole thing doesn't get too messy you want to come out one extra and then you want to come two down like this and then we're going to come around like that we don't need these and on this side as well and of course we're gonna have to box all that water in and you want to come one above where this is flat so that the items don't go off the side we can even get our trap doors or excuse me our fence fences and we can put these fences just like this in order to stop that water and let's get these back out like this and let's just drag this out for a little while and we'll come back to this in a few moments just so that we have the water because you're going to want to have one of your water buckets down here to send all of your items off to where they want to be 
Now you're going to come here and you want to place a water bucket on this top row like this all the way across and that will allow you to plant your kelp which will grow and turn these into water source blocks but it doesn't really matter for our purposes and you'll see that when we turn this on the kelp will start to fast grow and the water will get pushed out bringing the crops all the way over like this and you can see that the kelp is harvested it makes its way all the way to the end and then it makes its way into the water stream turn this back off the way you extend these water streams is as you've seen before but I will show you again in this video I'll also link you to a couple of other videos that go into a little bit more detail in this and let's bring this across like this as well now we're gonna want to find out where this water stream ends where it ends we're going to put a block of ice not regular ice make sure it's packed ice so it doesn't melt and you don't have any of those issues then we're going to take out our half slab and put a top half slab right above that we're going to put a sign behind it over the current water and then we're going to put our bucket on this block if you click on this it'll just waterlog that block so just like this and then that water stream will continue and let's pull this back out and you can see not like that like this that when the items hit it they will slide under or if it was on top of it it would land on top and keep going so you see the items don't get stuck they slow down a little bit but then they do continue on their way now you can now take these crops and do with them what you will you can set up a system like this that automatically cooks them and you can take them instead of putting them in a chest you can have those go directly into a composter or split them 50 50 or you can keep them as kelp you can do any of those things transform them into blocks for trading and building just whatever it is that you are going to do with the final outcome of your kelp on this particular system I set this up like the mini XP farm that I did with cactus which I'll also link to so you can see how that works and you power it with the same kelp blocks that it is generating for you and you can even on a farm this size with I believe nine slices still no problem to just have a rail system like this you don't have to do the water stream system for fuel you've seen in some other videos because of how good of a fuel the kelp is now if they don't patch this in 1.16 I will make an update video which will cook it and then also turn that into bone meal uh, for those that are interested but really once I've gotten you to that point over there where the items are in the water stream you can do anything you want with that kelp if they do end up patching this and you are playing in the snapshots it's a good opportunity to store a enormous amount of kelp for your future use if you found this video helpful I said I would really appreciate that subscription hit that subscribe button and I also would appreciate a like if you did find this helpful as well be sure to join us over on the discord if you have any questions any tips or any ideas for some future videos thanks for stopping by